Yo, I'm Bob. Into Star Wars. Happen to be totally blind since birth. Going to be talking about part eight of Ahsoka on Disney+. Plus. This is the season finale. Spoilers ahead. You might want to watch the episode before watching this review. However, if you don't mind spoilers, come right along as well. You do you. That being said, jumping right in. And you were warned. Now, the opening scene of Part 8 is one of my absolute favorites because, of course, we get to see more of the Night Sisters. We get to see Thrawn launching a couple TIE fighters to take out the Jedi shuttle. He says he will never make the mistake of becoming victim to Jedi heroism ever again. So... Uh, he's, you know, dispatching a couple TIE fighters, still trying to provide some distractions to buy himself some time so he can leave. All of the containers have been placed aboard the Chimera, and he is ready to go. We get to see the three great mothers, and they're basically leveling up Morgan Elsbeth. So she receives the gift of shadows, and the vow that she takes the questions that she's asked. Mother Talzin asked those very same questions. Had Asajj Ventress take the very same pledge in the Clone Wars episode, Massacre. I do believe it's very similar. I have the sound bite queued up on, uh, on YouTube here. Let me play this real quick. Do you pledge yourself to the sisterhood, to the magics, and the old ways? That's Talzin. Do you abandon your old life for this new one? Your loyalty, your lives. So yeah, it, it's pretty much the same as uh, Morgan's pledge here. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting that uh, they had Morgan Elsbeth deliver the, the the you know the same responses they asked Morgan the same questions Talzin asked Ventress, and of course after Morgan is reborn, a sister of the night, they gift her the blade of Talzin, and uh, we saw this blade in the Clone Wars. We saw it in the Disappeared, a two-parter taking place. In season six, when Mace dueled Mother Talzin, uh, she wielded this blade forged out of the Icor, and uh, I, I love that that term. Actually, such a gross uh, term for for Night Sister magic. Very, um, very visceral, I guess. So yeah, she is wielding the same blade Talzin wielded, and I, I thought maybe that it was, but I, I actually got that confirmed. This is being filmed. Uh, the day after Ahsoka episode 8 premiered, so I've seen it around three times. I'm actually uh, watching it a fourth time, so um, I'm really liking this episode. Of course, after the, the title, which is The Jedi, The Witch, and The Warlord, very uh, interesting parody of, of the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe from Chronicles of Narnia, uh, we get to see Hu Yang and, um, and Ezra, and I like how in the previous episode, I know there were a lot of fans worried as to whether or not we were going to see Ezra wielding a lightsaber. People were kind of upset that he wasn't wielding a lightsaber. But I mean, this is Star Wars, and of course, Ezra is building himself a new saber. I guess Hu Yang had some crystals that uh, that he kept with him. I would imagine when Order 66 went down, he probably tried to uh, make off with, with as many as he could. Um, I don't know when Ilum was actually besieged by the Empire and started to undergo the transformation into, into Starkiller base. Um, that would be an interesting story. If it's not already been told in the comics, I would imagine it probably has. But yeah, he's, he's built a lightsaber, and I like how the emitter that Hu Yang gives him is the second of two, and we, we learned that he gave Kanan, or Caleb, as Kanan was, was known as, you know, when he was a Jedi at the temple, he gave Kanan the other one, so now Ezra has one, and he's just built that lightsaber. And uh, we get that good scene with uh, Ahsoka 
and Sabine there. And she's she's talking about how um how Ahsoka, you know, Ahsoka's not mad at Sabine. She says Anakin was with her every step of the way when all the other Jedi decided to go against her. Or she's thinking about her trial, I'm sure, and then having to walk away from the Order. But even then, Anakin did his best to support her decision. So, I mean, Ahsoka learned from from her master, and she is attempting to follow his example. You know, the, the example of the best parts of Anakin. And uh, she's she's not upset with Sabine at all. We get the really action-packed scene with the TIE fighters there. And I like how they're they're a threat to the shuttle for just a bit, and then they shear through the solar panels, and they're both sent plummeting to uh, to the ground there. So that was a really cool scene. I probably should have stated the title of the episode right when we got started, but um, I'm going on, like, you know, as usual, five and a half hours of sleep. <laughs> I mean, Thrawn is having to dock with the eye of Sion, so he's done packing up the containers and now he's got to worry about the docking procedure so they can go home he decides to launch a ground assault and when morgan is addressing the night troopers who have volunteered for this assault she says in her new and awesome demonic night sister voice basically that uh, they have the blessing of the great mothers and Watching it for the first time, I'm sure we all figured, yeah, okay, these guys are going to get right back up once they are slain. Because we'd seen that, uh, we'd seen Night Sister Zombies in uh, the Clone Wars episode, Massacre. So, I mean, in my mind, it was a foregone conclusion, and I could not wait for what was to come. So, uh, when Ezra and Sabine and Ahsoka are headed toward uh, the fortress... And Ezra, you know, they're asking him about the layout of the place. And he says something like, well, Thrawn found the place. He woke up the witches. I, I made sure not to come here alone. Um, he woke the witches, stuck with me. And it's just a thought, but I'm wondering if those coffins might contain... Night Sisters in suspended animation rather than zombies. I don't know. Probably not, but it would be a good way to preserve um, Night Sister culture, you know, putting so many of them to sleep. And, uh, you know, may maybe the, uh, the coffins were set to wake at a certain point in time. I don't know. But uh, rather than run-of-the-mill zombies, uh, maybe the coffins actually contain... Sleeping Night Sisters, because, you know, Thrawn woke these three, the Great Mothers, so how many other Sleeping Night Sisters are there? And granted, it probably contains zombies, more zombies, but hey, I, I'm all for uh, myriads of Night Sisters entering the, the Star Wars galaxy. That would be pretty nifty. Thrawn just can't catch a break. Uh, he decides to launch a turbo laser bombardment and lucky for our heroes of course it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the ahsoka series if she uh passed away this quickly they managed to evade the turbo laser bolts and head into the fortress it was a pretty cool scene though um i remember reading quite a few times in the expanded universe books about how devastating turbo laser bombardments are and uh i i wonder just how much damage uh, this particular bombardment did to the surface of Peridia. Luckily, the Howlers weren't harmed or anything like that. And then we get that short and sweet Night Trooper battle where you've got uh, Ahsoka, Sabine, and Ezra working in tandem, and they go down just like that. But then, of course, we get the three Great Mothers chanting, and the Mist enters their armor, and they get right back up. I don't know if it's the same chanting as old Daka is making in that uh, Massacre episode from the Clone Wars. Uh, I'm not too sure about that. I need to go back and rewatch that and compare that with uh, the new episode of Ahsoka. But that scene was awesome. And of course, I can't help but think of Death Troopers by Joe Schreiber. Um, such a cool novel. 
And of course, we've seen zombies in uh, in canon in in the Clone Wars. But I love you know zombies wearing armor. These guys are able to fire blasters. Uh, you've got Ezra and Ahsoka and Sabine. I think it's just Ezra and Sabine because Ahsoka. I think she decides to head on and she's trying to get to the to the roof to stop Thrawn. But you've got a couple of them going up against the zombies, and you know they can't they can't knock them down until they aim for the head as as it is in all uh, zombie <laughs> stories you got to go for the head and they eventually realize that but i love how creepy these uh, troopers are their moans are amplified by their uh, by their vocoders and their helmets just a really fun fight scene it's perfect for october so i had a ball with that and I think the, the audio description track actually refers to them as death troopers. And, uh, you know, we've got Ahsoka going up against Morgan Elsbeth because now she's got the Blade of Talzin. So we get another lightsaber versus, uh, well, not lightsaber duel per se, saber versus Blade of Talzin duel. And that was very well done. I like the music. Uh, Morgan is not giving any quarter but I had hoped that Morgan wouldn't bite the big one. And, you know, after Ahsoka's dueling her for a bit, you know, Ezra manages to hop aboard a shuttle and he escapes. So you have Sabine and Ahsoka. They're stranded on Peridia. And I like, I like that last bit of the duel because you've got more troopers showing up and... Finally, Morgan, as far as we know, goes down. And I think Ahsoka actually gets her with the uh, the blade itself. And then I, I want to say, I'm not, I don't know what happens to it after that. So I wonder if the blade is still in play. I think it's probably left there. I would imagine it's obliterated with the fortress because before <laughs> Thrawn leaves, he takes some parting shots. Luckily, um, everyone escapes. Ezra gets away and uh, Thrawn and the, the Great Mothers, they jump to Hyper. I like how the, the Eye of Scion is basically a giant uh, hyperdrive ring. And it's, it's a really cool addition to the Star Destroyer as it jumps to hyperspace. And when they emerge, they arrive on Dathomir. So if those coffins do contain sleeping Night Sisters, that planet's going to be... Pretty lively when they eventually decide to wake in them, if they're Night Sisters. I don't really know what's in there. That's what I'm hoping for. Actual living Night Sisters, so we can have a pretty massive threat. Not just Thrawn coming into play in the galaxy, but quite a few witches. That's going to be pretty cool if that is indeed what's going on. So, one thing I wanted to see more of in the finale, but we didn't get, was Balin and Shin. It's like they decided to put them in a couple of very brief shots. Uh, we see Shin hanging out with the bandits, and you know she's she's big and bad. She's got her lightsaber pointed at the sky. So, I'm really glad that uh, Ivana Sokno's undoubtedly coming back of course this is ray stevenson's only performance in star wars sadly he is no longer with us may he rest in peace and we see him you know approaching those mortis statues i think the dude in the beard and the crown is probably the father uh, i don't really have a description of him sans the audio description track for this episode because uh, Disney Plus, if you're listening, there are no audio description tracks for the first six seasons of Clone Wars. Netflix had them. I don't know what happened during the transfer from Netflix to Disney Plus, but we still don't have those. So uh, as far as I know, that's probably the father. And so Balin, we only get to see him heading toward this mountain range. And who knows what he's up to? Um, I guess we might not know. It might have to be mentioned off screen. It might have to be in a novel. Uh, if it's in a comic book, hopefully the comics will eventually have alt text so I can continue uh, this story. I, say, I really like the character of Balin, and I hope that uh, he does show up in a book or uh, some other project. Ray Stevenson did a fantastic job. I think the characters of Balin and Shin are too 
new favorites. They're, they're fast favorites. They became fast favorites for me. I like the reunion scene there at the end of the episode with Ezra and Hera when he shows up on the uh, on home one in his night trooper armor and he takes his helmet off i think chopper might actually suspect who it is but i mean it's chopper speaking chopper ease so um it's a pretty cool little scene there and i like how ahsoka has come to grips with sabine and uh and herself there Along with Hu Yang, they're stranded on Peridia. Thrawn's gone, the Pergil aren't coming back, and we don't know what the heck's going to happen next. I know we're getting Skeleton Crew in 2024. I'm not expecting to see them in that series. I think, hoping, I'm hoping anyway that Ahsoka is going to get a season two, so maybe we'll have to wait until then to see what their next move is going to be. But yeah, now they're on Peridia, and Ezra is back in the in the galaxy. I like that Thrawn and the Night Sisters are on Dathomir. Of course, if you've read Courtship of Princess Leia um, in the Expanded Universe, there we see the Empire uh, on Dathomir as well, having teamed up with the Night Sisters. So you've got Thrawn instead of Warlord Zinj. You don't have the Iron Fist there. I would like to see Zinj and the Iron Fist showing up in, uh, in the Disney timeline. Now, I don't know if it would have to be a brief cameo or what, but I really like that Superstar Destroyer. So yeah, he's hatching his schemes on uh, on Dathomir there, and I can't wait to see Thrawn's next moves. Um, I don't know when we're going to see him next, hopefully in some live action stuff. It's going to be a long time until Dave's movie comes out, so hopefully we'll be getting to see more of Thrawn and Ahsoka before then. I have no idea if they're going to be in Skeleton Crew or not. I'm guessing probably not, because that's going to be about new characters, just your your pirate scourge and things like that. Who knows what that's going to be about, though. So we're probably going to have to wait until the movie. I liked the finale, although I wanted more of Balin and Shin. I think the action was top-notch. But uh, as my friend Alicia said, basically on Twitter, uh, you know, she'd wanted to have a little less, a little less action and uh, and more answers. So, But, I mean, I still really like the episode. I would rate it pretty high. Uh, I wish it had been longer, you know, 49 minutes is, is a pretty decent length, but I feel like, uh, possibly an hour for episodes like this, maybe a little over an hour. Uh, that's the thing about streaming. You can make the episodes as long as you'd like. Uh, I still give it like a 9.5, maybe a 10 out of 10. I liked the finale. I think they're setting a lot of stuff up for future uh, series. And of course, Dave's movie, hopefully more than one movie. I would like more than one in the in the post original trilogy era i mean i know we're getting the the uh mandoverse movie and we're, we're gonna get uh, a movie f uh, featuring ray after after the sequel trilogy so a couple of those i could use a few more though Something positive. like the cameo of anakin at the end of the episode you know he's happy that ahsoka's come as far as she has it's kind of cool that he's kind of there beaming and i think sabine might sense him. I actually thought we were going to get a Kanan Jarrus cameo at the end of the episode. We'd already gotten to see Anakin, but I was like, oh, wow, what are they going to do? We're going to get to see Kanan's Force Ghost? Nah, it was Anakin. That's okay, though. It's always cool to see Hayden in Star Wars. I I think the cast did an amazing job, and uh, I guess that'll do for the Ahsoka episode reviews. I think... I would like to go back and rewatch seasons one and two of The Mandalorian next. I didn't have the YouTube channel up and running when they premiered for the first time, so I think it would be fun to go back and talk about those episodes, what I thought, what I felt, what I'd speculated when they when they were first airing. Uh, that, that'd be kind of fun. I haven't watched Mandalorian in a while, and I need to go back and eventually do Bad Batch season um, seasons one... Oh, actually, just season one, because only season two is coming after that. So, yeah, just Bad Batch season one. That'll do, guys, and I'll hear you in the next uh, Star Wars episode review vid. Man, we got a while until new Star Wars shows. <laughs> but I'll still be doing episode reviews till then. May the Force be with you, and until next time.